I started writing, uh, I, I wrote the first episode of The Bright Sessions back in 2014 and then just like sat on it for a year. I met, I think, all of you in 2014. We all met at an acting class at BGB and then we met UCB. And then just being in class with you guys and thinking about it more and just wanting to make something that I could control, I finally reached out to you in like the summer of 2015. I talked to you about it first, I think. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I did have the Facebook message saved for a while, but then I got rid of my freaking <laughs> Facebook. So I still have it. <laughs> like the first initial, maybe it was a text. I, I think it was a text remember. probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause you and I were hanging out all the time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think I just like texted you being like, hey, I, I, if I write more of this, if I write a character for you, will you yeah. be in this? Cause Caleb and Dr. Bright were already characters I had, and then I just wrote Chloe for you. Yeah. I think at that point you were already the Tina Fey to my Amy Poehler. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I yeah. Cool. Well, because we'd already started like making some like some things like. Well, I remember. I remember in the that reach out, you were kind of nervous about. It. You're like, well, yeah. it, it may be a stupid idea, and you yeah, don't have I to totally say yes or anything. Understand if you don't want to. <laughs> but we then. were we were in class together, and they were always saying like, you need to make something and just do something. And like, we weren't working that much at all. <laughs> and, and so it was. I remember you being like, uh, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. And I was like, no, I definitely will do this. This is great. Yeah, um, you guys and, have guessed pretty quickly. Well, and you were like, oh, actually, I've been wanting to do a doctor thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was aging up, and I wanted to do. Yeah. I wanted to do roles that were more appropriate for like 30s, and I didn't have anything like that. So, I remember yeah. you mentioned you were like, yeah, my, my agent or manager someone like thinks I should have it for my reel, and I, I remember like clarifying like, just oh, so right. you know, like it is just audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember the terrible, like how, what you put us through for that read through? We did all of the first season <laughs> yes. in one sitting. You're like, I'll that buy us a pizza. It'll be great. It'll be fine. And we did essentially a table read. We were all sitting around in your living room, and we just went through episode, episode, episode. How long were those episodes? Of the first, the first season was like. Yeah, so I wrote. The we read the whole first. We read the season. whole first season. Yeah, nine episodes. And then didn't we episodes. go to class after. We had to go after, and we sat in class, oh and we were so <laughs> emotionally drained and they're like, you need to show up. And I was like, we've been showing up all day. <laughs> we all really wanted to do a second season. And I remember you very early on were still like, maybe we won't do it and this is just a thing. And then we kept on like, I remember joking with Julian being like, we just need to put like Born in a cage and like hit it with a stick and be like, write more stuff because right. we were having so much fun. Yeah. And then I, I distinctly remember there was this turning point where we, the show really hadn't even taken off. People weren't, not a ton of people were no. listening to it. But then you talk to us and you're like, let's just do this. Yeah. Because we're having a good time. Well, because also, yeah. like, I, I think, I think to your point about how like long the, the table read was, I, I didn't know like how things were going to translate. I had yeah, like Dr. Bright as a character, and obviously Sam, and then Caleb, and then I wanted to write something for you, and so I was like, great, okay, there are going to be these three patients. We'll do three episodes each, and so we'll do nine episodes for the first season. That seems like reasonable. It's nice. It's got a beginning, middle, and end, right? Um, and they each were like ten to twelve pages. They weren't long. Those oh. first scripts, and so that table read, I was like. This will take like three hours, and yeah. it took like seven yeah. somehow. Yeah. But then yeah. the recording took no time at all. Because then after that, I was like, okay, well, we'll do one episode each session. And we did that for the first three episodes, and it took like an hour and a half to record. I have to be honest, talking about this now, I don't know what could have possibly happened at that table read. Because I do also, re I remember it being so long. It was so long. It was so long, but it how? It was just yeah. the f fact of reading a script oh, after one after another. One after another. And then yeah. I think we're like, we need to take a break or something. It was just the one after another. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was just, I think it was yeah. just really emotionally taxing. Cause also like the emotions of it build yeah. in such a way yeah. that it was, it was intense, you know? Um, but then the first season was so kind of easy to record and easy to edit because I didn't know what I was doing. Compared to other seasons. Like <laughs> I know, looking I, back on that, no, I'm like, I re oh. I listened to it back yeah. and like, my first episode, like, I'm essentially cold reading, I'm pretty sure. Like, I, I'm pretty sure I'm like, oh, I have powers? Cool. You know, like, in the read, because I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> but also the actual quality of them, even in that season, gets so, like, it's like, I don't even know what episode specifically it is, but there's one episode where suddenly, like, the truck noises are a little bit less, and, like, uh, it's so like we put a wind cover on the, the mic or something. The <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, but it, it, it sounds like that. Like, I was, like, listening to the first one, and I was like, there was like, one episode in particular, because the first nine were all recorded on your Blue Yeti mic. Mm. What? Yeah. 
that, that I borrowed from you, and then and then the and then the tenth episode with the one with Charlie, the, the first episode of our second season, I actually got like a second shotgun mic, and we started oh. doing it on the shotgun mics from there, which are still not the right ones to use for a podcast, but I, we made it work. But I think it's I remember there was one episode in particular. I think it was episode four because it was an episode that you and I were in that. Okay. There was like a lawnmower going distantly down the street the stops. entire episode. And I spent like somewhere between nine and 12 hours just getting that sound out. Mm-hmm. And I think after that, I sort of figured out how to like create a noise gate and to create like, you know, all of these different things in audition. And so I think that, yeah, then the, like the background sounds there's got a little bit better. There's one sound where it literally like, there's, I, I wish I had saved it. Cause there's one where there's like a background sound that then stops. I bet it was. And I, you can hear it like ha- happening in the. So I'm like, yeah. Because oh. I had no idea what I was doing. I, well, I just, that's what I want to say. Like, what I love about that is, like, I know this is going to sound stupid, but, like, you didn't let that stop you. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. think about how, like, where you would be now if you hadn't just been like, guess I'll figure it out, yeah. you know? <laughs> I guess I'm going to make a thing and. Well, like I, there also was no like deadline. Like I just arbitrarily chose November first as the launch date, and we had our table read late September. So we recorded all of that in October, basically, and I did all the post before yeah. November first. And yeah, I, did, I was just like, instead of being like, well, I guess it's gonna be pushed back, or like I don't know if I can do this, I'm just gonna throw it in the trash. I was like, I guess this is your Friday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what you do now. This is what you're doing now. <laughs> But the biggest change was was Dr. Bright, I think, because right. she was supposed to be a villain initially. Mm-hmm. And you, on the, our very first day of recording, which is you and me, episode one, you brought a binder with all the oh, scripts yeah. so and yeah. a Dr. Bright bio that I yeah. still have not read. Was there anything oh, yeah. in there that like, like what was your, yeah, what, what was in that bio, if you can remember? Oh my gosh, I don't remember. I should have reviewed it before coming here. I know that there was stuff about the AM, but the AM didn't have a name yet, so I had made up some random name for it. And I know there would have been stuff about Mark, because we say his name like once in the first nine. Yeah. It was something something really brief like that, so I had to ask you about that, so then I had backstory about Mark. I'm not even sure I had like an answer for that yet. You did. did I? Okay. I mean, for the, I feel like it's for kind the of funny because yeah. when I'm listening, when I was listening to it back, I'm I was doing this kind of thing where I was trying to figure out like, how much did Lauren have planned out here? I know it was like you're flying by the seat of your pants a little yeah. bit, but you also did have like quite a bit that even that I had even missed. I think listening it to the first yeah. the first time, like as I was listening back to the first season, I remember that you were reading Tribe at the mm-hmm. same time, and so it was just interesting to sort of pick up. In the episodes like with Sam in World War One and how she has PTSD from being in a war, yeah, and then um, bringing Frank into it and like dealing with like his trauma from the war, I was just like, I don't know, it was a, it was a cool reflection of like, yeah, because you like know the media that I was consuming at that yeah, time. Yeah, well, and, and so also like <laughs> I just know like your your big old heart, you know, <laughs> and so like to just be like. The, the horrors of war and like to to like yeah. put contextualize that in like a uh, in casual consuming media <laughs> was just like that's very Lauren. Well, I think that's what <laughs> excited all of us about the project as we like got into it more was was realizing like when you <laughs> offered a role I was like yes I get to do something which was sort of the first part of that and then it, it then as we settled into our characters and had these different narratives and we're dealing with like some pretty heavy things what was amazing is as people started to discover the show, we would get like messages and stuff. Like I, I still get stuff in my DMs of, of people saying, hey, you know, I, I listened to this, I listened to the Bright Sessions with my parents and it gave me the courage to come out to them and we can have a discussion of this. And I like, I, I get so teary every time and have people reach out and it's like, and also to be able to like live through this role, mm. it has been really amazing for me because it's it's like I was closeted in school, and but but I think it, it was so great to to see the impact with people listening, but also the fact that I got to play this role and and go through high school as almost like a redo and and live through that and and not be like not live with the shame that I lived with when I was younger, yeah. and to be able to to have this positive character dealing with this very openly. Um, so it's, I, I think it's cool, the topics that we, we covered, where it, it initially started with, yes, job, and then became this like amazing thing. The breadth of what the Bright Sessions covers, like, I mean, no one's left out. You know what I mean? Like, that, <laughs> this is the truth. Like, there's a place for everyone in the Bright Sessions.
it's funny, I sort of like accidentally like manufactured the thing that I was seeking out in writing Sam as a character where it's like she was isolated and lonely and like crippled by her anxiety and like, you know, sort of social, like her lack of social ability. And I wanted her to find a community and find a family in this. And then it's like out of that, I also sort of like built a family for I myself, know, which is totally like, did. and that's the thing yeah. that I think people love about the Bright Sessions. This is, it's a community. I was like proud of my ability to sort of utilize Tumblr, which is something that like, Oh my Many God, you people. played them like a fiddle. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Was Tumblr like, paid from day one? It absolutely was. A closeted <laughs> gay football player. <laughs> oh my God. All you had to do is be like, okay, yeah, he's a vampire. Anxiety, and then, time travel. And yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Is there a favorite fan interaction that you guys have had, either like in person or online? Hmm. As I thought of something. Was it Emerald City Comic Con when we were walking through one of the big rooms and it, somebody was behind yes. us and we were just talking to each other? And they recognized and us because of our voices. Our voices. <laughs> which oh, was really that. So they stopped us. That was really, really cool. Yeah. That was I'm cool. sure like real famous people hate that. Yeah. Hate that shit. Yeah. They're like, ugh, that's yeah. insane. Yeah. But for us, it happens yeah. once every event. So, you know, somebody just recognized me and asked, and I was like, oh yeah. And then they came up to our booth later, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think, I think oh. it's cool because you're like, oh, somebody saw my work or, or yeah. listened to my work or something. Yeah. But I think also like building off of that is just cool to know that there's like an impact, that right. someone is out there listening to it and that they're and just as excited. By it. Yeah. Also, being a creator is can be really freaking hard. Yeah. Like, and working in an industry like this can be really, really hard and it can be isolating. Yeah. Disheartening. Constantly <laughs> questioning yourself, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean? Most people are telling yourself. you your work is crap yeah. for the most part, right? Yeah, and so like, not good enough. to like have a moment where you're like, oh my God, all of that work that I did had even a, gave a little bit of sparkle to somebody's life. Yeah. Again, it's just like, it's just the human experience. You know, it's the human part of it. Well, and, and I think, yeah, the the effect that it's had on not just, like, my career, but my actual, like, life is, like, can't, it can't be, like, untangled. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, like, I don't know, like, is there is there a way in which, a significant way in which your lives are, like, different now than they were four years ago because of specifically of the Bright Sessions? I mean, we started a company together. That's, it's I guess, true. significant. <laughs> I'd say I'm, I, I, I'm, like, my truer self. Hmm. And it, it, it has everything to do with being able to like live through this character and, and do this. I'm getting choked up thinking about this, but but it's like it's just it's meaningful to me to be part of something that I so desperately wanted as a as a kid. So it's uh, yeah, I, I think I'm just more myself because of this piece of art that was created and that I got to be a part of. It's helped me a lot with. I don't know, this isn't quite the right word, but confidence. Like I would say before Bright Sessions, I was literally, like especially as an actor, I was like, I don't, I may or may not be good at acting. Like I don't know. And I don't really have, I haven't had a history of consistent work to tell me There's that, a feedback that loop. Yeah, that I'm, I should continue doing this. <laughs> and like with the Bright Sessions, and I think it's helped me get to the point from you know, four or five years ago being like, I might be crap and I'm wasting my time to being like, yeah, you know what? I haven't worked in months. I haven't worked in six months, but I know I'm good. So fuck all y'all. Yeah. I'm gonna, yes. you know, keep doing, you know, I'm just gonna keep doing what I can do. You well, know? I'm gonna go next. <laughs> <laughs> There's, um, I can't remember what movie it's from, but I think of it all the time when someone's like, Someone says to another character, you're my role model. And the, and the, uh, the first character's like, your role model can't be the same age as you. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like what, what I took away from the Bright Sessions was like watching you build something from the ground up was so awesome. Like I feel, whenever I'm working on something now, I feel like I'm always like, how hard would Lauren Shippen work on this? <laughs> she would fucking knock it out. Yeah. So you need to Lauren Shippen this shit <laughs> and get going. <laughs> so you're my role model that's the same age as me. Thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's kind of, that's what I was gonna say, honestly, because I, I think I think to, to your point, Julia, there have been so many times like where we've recorded something and you you hold yourself to like such a high standard. And I give you so many 
like competing emotions to act in scenes <laughs> that like you'll get you'll get like frustrated or, or you'll want to do another take even though like you've already pushed yourself to the limit and I'll be like no I promise you I have everything I know how I'm gonna edit this and it's just like it's this it's this nice reminder of like okay like if if Julia Morizawa is like not confident all the time in her abilities then like my <laughs> imposter syndrome is okay <laughs> like I don't have to be confident in my abilities to still make something that like is meaningful to other people because everything that you've done is so meaningful to me. And yeah, it's like you, you don't always necessarily have that confidence. I don't think any of us do all the time, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I think that that doesn't discount the work that's being done. Right. And it doesn't, just because your brain is telling you that you're not good doesn't mean you aren't good. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like it's it's really really neat to sit here and like like yeah. to like look around the table and be like shit we did something very cool and it's leading to like so many other exciting things like all you guys are absolutely killing it and we're we're I don't know it's nice to come back here and just feel good about this cuz well, it's been a lot of work. I'm like when we all got here we were sort of looking around and being like is it really just the four of us? Yeah. Like, is that really how it started? And because it's gotten so big. Yeah, I, I mean, so cast and crew and everything, and now with the spinoffs and every, and like everything else that we're doing, that our community's grown so much. And it's funny to think that, yeah, it really just was the four of us in my living room with a, yeah. with a pizza. Just it's how it should reading start. through and and, <laughs> right. and discovering that reading nine scripts in one day is a bad idea. Yeah, <laughs> never doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.